Hey, welcome back. Today we are going to be working with SQLite on a Windows computer using something called DB Browser, which is a free and open source tool you can download from the internet. I'd say that's about all the introduction we need, so without further ado, let's get right into it. In order to get DB Browser, we can just go straight to their webpage, sqlitebrowser.org slash DL. I'll put the link in the description. We're gonna be doing this on a Windows machine, but this does work on all sorts of other machines, so we're gonna get the standard installer for 64-bit Windows. Go ahead and download that. It's very small, only 18.9 megabytes. So let's just go ahead and open it and we'll get it installed. Just go through the setup wizard, accept, pretty standard stuff. I'm fine with it just being in the program menu. You might want desktop version. Next, next, install, approve. Takes almost no time at all. And we're done, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and open it up. When you open up DB Browser for the first time, it's gonna look something like this. And if you've got a SQLite database that you're already looking to work with, you're done. You just go to the Open Database button up top there and then load it in. However, I am gonna show an example of creating a database in a couple of tables with some primary and foreign key constraints, and then using the Execute SQL tab to show you how DB Browser allows you to work with your tables. With that said, we'll go ahead and hit New Database up here, and we will call our database Hockey, because if you can't tell, uh, hockey is my favorite sport, so we're going to go ahead and just start by making a games table. We'll add a new field here. It'll be an integer, and we're going to make it the primary key. We'll call it game ID, and it's going to be non-null, primary key, auto-incrementing, and universal, or unique, rather. And then from there, we will add a new table. This will be team one, a new field, rather. Add another field for team two. So these will be the two teams that participated in the game. And then we'll have the game date, which is also gonna be a text field because SQLite doesn't have date fields. And so we'll hit okay. And there we go, we've got our games table. We are going to, however, make one more table. This is gonna be our goals table. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reference the game ID. This is an integer and we are going to make a foreign key constraint on the games.gameID field. Hit enter and you can see it creates down here the foreign key constraint. Essentially this user interface here for the create table thing is just constructing the create table statement for you. I find it pretty easy and intuitive though so I tend to use it. We'll add another field, we'll have the goal scorer. One more, oops, goal scorer. That's gonna be a text field. We'll also have the team that the goal scorer is on, also a text field. And then we'll have the goal time. This is the time in the game when the goal occurred. That'll also be a text field. So we've got game ID, goal score, team, goal time, text, 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 integer. Yep, looks good to me. So we go ahead and hit OK. And now we've got our two tables. Next, what we're going to want to do is add some data. So we'll go to the Browse Data tab here. And under the Games table, we'll hit Add a New Record. You can see the game ID is already populated for us because it's auto-incrementing. And we'll say it's it was a game between the Capitals and the Bruins on the 1st of January. Let's go ahead and make these columns a little bit wider. There we go. Add another record. Let's say the Rangers play the Stars also on the first. And then we'll just add one more, why not? Say the Islanders played the Sharks on the second. There we go. And now we've got some games. Let's go ahead and make some goals. So we'll go down here in the table section to the goals table. We'll hit add a new record. We'll add a game ID. You can see here, because we have a primary key constraint, this is the foreign key, it's a drop down. It'll only let you select one of the values from the primary key for the other table. So in this case, let's say it was game one. Let's say it was Ovechkin for the capitals at 12.01. And let's make these a little wider. And then let's add one more. Let's say this is in game two. And I think in game two, it was the Rangers, yeah. So we'll just say uh, Panarin for the Rangers at 521. Okay, and so there you go. That's how easy it is to make tables and to add data. Um, SQLite obviously is a little bit more limited in what it can do as opposed to some of the more fully fleshed like non-open source projects like Microsoft SQL Server and things like that. But you can get by on a lot of different types of projects with just SQLite.
That being said, let's go ahead and go over to the execute SQL section and I'll look at how we could reference these two tables and join them and things like that. Because the actual query um, section of DB Browser is relatively powerful. It's pretty good for simple use cases. So in this case, let's just say select star from, and you can see here we start with G O A L S. We've got the goals table and we've got the games table. Let's just select star from games, go ahead and run it. And here's all of our stuff. Now, let's say we wanted to get all of the goals scored in this game here. So let's just say select star from games and let's just uh, join goals on games.gameid equals uh, goals.gameid. And this should give us all of the goals for everything here, of which, again, there's only two. Of course, we're doing an inner join here, so it removes any go games without goals. If we were to do a left join, obviously, then it would keep all the games and there'd be nulls here because there's no goals. Let's go ahead and add another goal to the game number one. So let's say, let's say in game number one, um, I don't know anybody who plays for the Bruins currently other than Pasternak. I think that's how you spell it, Pasternak, yeah, something like that. Scored for the Bruins against the Capitals in game one at 1446. And then we will go back to our execute SQL, go ahead and run it. And then you can see here, we've got the two goals for the Capitals Bruins game. So that's basically it. I mean, DB Browser is a very lightweight program. It's very easy to use. It's incredibly fast to install and get started. So if you're looking to work with SQLite databases on your computer, and you wanna have some sort of like graphical interface to manage that database as opposed to using like Python or something like that, then DB Browser is an absolutely insanely powerful tool for it. And it, you know, you can get a lot of stuff done with something even as simple as this. So if you're looking to get started learning SQL and you wanna le learn about how databases work and stuff like that, I, I honestly can't recommend DB Browser enough. If you're looking to learn more about SQL queries and things like that, SQLZoo.net has got some fantastic tools and things for you to learn. And I've also got a couple of videos in a series of videos about SQL interview questions and answers if you're looking to prep for an interview.